Well, good morning. We are so glad that you are joining with us to worship today. There, we're still in some of these weird times where we are able to do things uh, digitally, virtually, as a result, uh, without any of you in the room with me. Well, I brought Nala today, and uh, she is a treat. Hopefully, uh, she's better than just a picture. Uh, she's going to be a part of our introduction to our message in a little bit, so you'll have to stay tuned for that if you want to see her again um, this morning. But listen, we are grateful that you have tuned in uh, with us, and we look forward to worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ we would ask any of our new viewers if you would text welcome to the number that is on the screen so that we can uh, communicate with you and be able to send you information and updates uh, about what all is going on virtually at Emerald Coast Fellowship. I also wanted to be able to briefly mention to you, questions are beginning to be asked um, as we try to open up as a uh, business community, as a community, uh, what's the church's plan? Well, listen, the church is going to have a plan, and we've got some ideas, but the truth of the matter is that we have begun to schedule an elders meeting that will take place after Mother's Day, and we will come back. Uh, the staff will, um, will be able to give uh, a plan to them. We'll evaluate it together, pray over it. We want you to be safe. We want to be safe, uh, and so... Really, we don't, there's not a lot that's changed as far as the church goes right now because our numbers are what they are when we gather together. And so just know that we can't wait to get back safely, uh, and we will give you more information as soon as we have that available and ready for you with some clarity because right now things are changing day to day. Listen, we are excited to be in the house of God this morning and to be worshiping together our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our God, our peace um, the one who provides his comfort through his Holy Spirit. So uh, I would say sit back and relax, but actually join in and sing, participate, open your Bibles, uh, do it as families, do it individually, do it in one heart with us as we worship our Lord.
Good morning. I am so, so grateful that we're together, and honestly, I'm excited. I didn't think of it till just a little bit ago that I, today is one of those rare and unique times that I could literally bring my puppy to church 
And uh, I am unashamedly going to tell you today that I have the cutest puppy ever. Uh, and for this moment, my vote, I guess, is the only one that counts. Nala is 10 months old, and uh, she has been a delight in our home. And so far, she's been really good. Now, there's a reason why I brought her up here. Uh, I know that our Lord loves us. And I was reading in a passage that I'm going to share in just a minute as we, as we begin to dig into what it means to have Jesus inside of us. Uh, it tells us, literally, we're going to look at a Bible verse. It tells us that, that, the, that the Holy Spirit, um, when we don't have words, He, uh, and we groan within, that, that the Holy Spirit Himself, uh, with groanings that can't be understood, can intercede on our behalf before the Lord. And the image that is there, actually in Romans 8, we're going, to be, uh, we're going to be in Acts 1, but in Romans 8, it describes, it literally describes God understanding what's going on in us. He knows our needs, and he's able to align our prayers with what is his will and what is our heart. And I'm just going to tell you, some of you all have struggled to know how to pray, what to say to God, with this puppy, as we have gotten to know her, I mean, she's still just 10 months, but we have learned that she has different sounds for different things. Just before you came in here, she was growling at Brother Clay, and not because he's a bad guy. She just couldn't see him. It's so bright of her, she couldn't see. But I know that that growl means that she's a little insecure. Uh, I also know that what the whimper is that she gives me, the sigh that happens whenever um, whenever she uh, is in pain. We've seen, we've seen some of that. We know what it sounds like for her to want to come back inside when she's gone out uh, to go potty and she comes back in. Um, and, and so I also know, and I'll, we'll see what she does. I also know what happens when I flip her upside down in the morning times. A lot of times I'll flip her upside down and I will rub her belly. And sometimes when I rub her belly, and she's not doing it for me right now. Ooh, you can't hear it. But she will, she will sigh or groan, and that sigh or groan means, oh, that feels good. That feels good. And then there's other times that you, I don't, I've never seen Nala do it, but there's other times that I have seen individuals, they don't say a lot, but they growl. Have you ever done that? Have you ever gotten so angry? Well, I'm just going to tell you, when we have these different emotions inside of us and don't even have words, our God loves us so much, and His, His Spirit, our Jesus is inside of us, and we've got some scriptural teachings today that will help us to understand the role of God dwelling within us, uh, and hopefully this image will help us in that process. I am telling you, I am totally distracted, and so I'm going to have to let Nala um, go home with Allie here real quick. And so, uh, yeah, she did a terrific job. Give her a treat, Allie. Listen, as we look at Acts chapter 1-8, we are continuing to look at these 50 days between uh, Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and Passover, and, and, and literally what is the birthday of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that we now know. Uh, we call, it, it's always been called Pentecost today. As Christians, we call it uh, the birthday uh, of the church. And so the reality is that as we are looking today at this text, we are looking at the time period after the resurrection, but just before the ascension of the Lord Jesus. And so as we are looking at this, we, we find some facts out. We find some, uh, some data uh, about this period of time, what was happening with the disciples as we've described it in the meantime. Now, what we also know is that um, we're looking at the introduction of an entire narrative or book that was given to us by the same writer of the Gospel of Luke. And so he kind of finishes the Gospel of Luke with the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he begins it with the ascension of the Lord Christ, and he literally writes it to the same individual, to uh, Theophilus, uh, and records it for him. Luke was a doctor. Luke was a, uh, a person that took lots of notes, lots of detail, uh, as you would expect a physician to do. And so I want to just, if I can, read these eight verses, and we'll get through as much of it as we can today. And hopefully, you know, I sincerely hope that by the time we finish, you will be encouraged by the role that the Lord Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit desires to have in your life and heart. And so it says this, beginning in Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. In the first book of uh, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. In other words, in the Gospel of Luke. Until the day when He was taken up. After he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive, that is, Jesus did, after his suffering, after the cross, by many proofs, appearing to them 
during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John the Baptist, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. That's what Jesus told them. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so we have this classic and yet pivotal and primary passage of Scripture that gives us our purpose. It gives us a plan that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to his disciples. But there are some important facts mixed in this that we need to see that will help us know help us know how to do life as a believer in Jesus Christ. And so I want to look back at this. Toward the beginning, I really was, I was taken and my focus was drawn to what we find about this descriptor. He, he, describes, he describes this book as being after he, uh, the Lord Jesus, had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. It says Jesus gave the, the, or the, he gave the commands through the Holy Spirit. And I thought about this for a moment, uh, and actually quite a lot, and I read several commentaries reflecting on what this role of the Holy Spirit was in Jesus' words. Now, if you'll remember back with me, when Jesus was baptized, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended on him. It also tells us that several times throughout his, uh, throughout his ministry that the Holy Spirit was there, that the Holy Spirit uh, acted or uh, surrounded him or empowered him. And here's what the truth is of what we believe as, as believers in Jesus Christ and, and, and what the apostles have, cho- have told us is that Jesus acted and walked in the power of the Holy Spirit whenever he lived his life perfectly on this earth. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit of God and empowered to do exactly what the Heavenly Father desired for him to do. And he did it. His promise to his disciples was not to leave them uh, as orphans, but his promise to them was that He would be with them, Jesus himself would be with them and in them. If we take a moment to look at the the Great Commission, we'll find that his promise was to be with them always to the end of the age. Um, And certainly his promise was to be with them so that by his authority they would receive, it describes power, to carry out this mission. So here's the beauty of that. Here's what that means. It means that our Heavenly Father, by the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ, has promised that those that receive Jesus as Savior and ask for forgiveness as we continually, week by week, are offering you the peace of Christ uh, to be at odds no longer with the Lord God, uh, but be at peace with Him because you have asked for forgiveness. When that happens, when you ask Jesus to forgive you, the Bible describes for every believer the filling of the Holy Spirit or a baptism of the Holy Spirit which means that the Lord Jesus lives in you. Now, I will tell you that there is some disagreement among some as to what the baptism of the Holy Spirit means. Now, when I say that, I'm saying that denominationally there is some, there's great discussion about that. I'll tell you very clearly and candidly my conviction and understanding is that the Scriptures teach that the Holy Spirit himself, as, one of the, as the third person of God, enters into the life of the believer when one yields their life and heart to the Lord Jesus. And what that means for us is that when we choose Jesus as Savior, it means that we are full of God's Spirit and we yield our flesh and ourself to His His leadership. Uh, The the book of Ephesians literally uh, describes to us uh, a picture of the Holy Spirit um, guiding us and directing us. Galatians 5 is a picture uh, as well that describes the leadership of the Spirit of God in us versus the leadership of the flesh. Um, And truly, the fact of the matter is that the role of the Spirit in Jesus' life, and certainly in the lives of the apostles that we see after him, any time there was a miraculous encounter or there was something that was uh, uh, an evidence of the Spirit of God, it was for the purpose of pointing believers to Jesus. Now, in, in that descriptor, I want you to know that 
We should in this day, all believers, and I would tell you any denomination of, of, of Christian would tell you this. In Orthodox Christianity, the Holy Spirit of God is the empowerment to do the will of God. And I'm not sure where you've been lately. I don't know what your life has been like this week, but it has seemed to me to be an emotional roller coaster. And we've all through, been through different pieces and parts as we've walked through these weeks and days together. We're all asking the question, what does this mean? We're wanting answers candidly that aren't there, that, that, that the decisions are going to be made and have changing implications of that as we move forward. I'll be honest, I've sat with uh, groups of preachers every week, multiples of them, in addition to our staff, trying to figure out what the next step looks like. And until we know, we won't know. That sounds really clear and obvious, doesn't it? Well, it's the truth. The truth is that there's things about the future that aren't within our hands. I am confident that there's a future. I'm confident it's a bright future. I'm confident that we are in the opening up stages of things. We're over the hill. All that stuff is good. But I would be less than transparent and authentic with you today if I told you that I had, did not feel like that on a couple of occasions this week that I had operated perhaps more out of the flesh than out of the spirit. And it's forced me to dig deeply. Some of you are digging deeply now asking spiritual questions. And I want to encourage you that if you are asking the question about God speaking to you, can he, does he, here's the beauty of it. I've heard people say, Jesus spoke to me and said, or the Lord spoke to me, or the Holy Spirit said to me. I truly believe the Scriptures teach us that as we read the Scriptures and inform our conscience that God prompts us. He gives us thoughts and motivations and inclinations. Uh, it comes out, for me a lot of times, it comes out in making phone calls and texts uh, at the right time, not knowing there's an issue. Sometimes it's in messages like this where I'm talking about things that you're dealing with having no clue what's going on in your life, but our God knows and his spirit go knows. Um, and so God has a way of working in us and informing our conscience, never though in a way that is outside of his word. One of the ways that you know if it's him or not is if it doesn't line up with the scripture, God didn't tell you that. So if God tells you to go rob the corner store because they got a candy bar you want, you don't have any home and you don't have any money, I can tell you God didn't tell you to do that because the Bible says not to steal. Um, if you decide the Lord told you not to clean your room and your mama said clean your room, the uh, Lord didn't tell you not to clean your room because your mama said to clean your room and the Bible says that you need to honor your mama. Uh, and there's nothing dishonorable before God about cleaning your room. So clean your room. And so it makes for a good parameter. Here's what you got to be really careful when you say God told me, especially leaders and fathers and those that are, that are making decisions, parents, when you're talking to children, you tell them that God said, and it becomes obvious that God didn't say, uh, now we're going to have a problem. They're not going to trust that what you said God said is what he said. And so be real careful in how you say that. But here's the truth. There seems to be no clear boundary between Jesus speaking and the Holy Spirit speaking in the life of the believer. In fact, the same commands that it says the Holy Spirit gave through Jesus to the apostles in the last chapter of Luke in, verse, in chapter 24, where it describes really the same scenario, right? Before, we looked at it last week. It says that Jesus taught them, doesn't say anything about the Holy Spirit. Can I just tell you that the Holy Spirit works and acts on behalf of our Heavenly Father and our Lord God and gives the Lord's will and wishes to us. And if the Holy Spirit speaks to you, the Lord Himself has spoken through His Spirit, which indwells you. You say, why does all that matter? Because He promised to be with us no matter where we went or what we did. And I don't know about you, but I need to know that He's present with me. When I don't know the answers to the questions... And I don't, I don't know the, all the decisions that I, I can tell you there is comfort in knowing that my Jesus lives, and not just that he lives somewhere distant, he has promised by his word to live in me. As we look at this, I do want to give you, uh, before I move forward, I want to give you Romans chapter 8, and verse 8 and 9, and then also verse 26. Uh, Romans... 8 says this in verse 8, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Anybody recognize that in the flesh, you, I, I, I'm in the, when I'm in the, I can't please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not 
belong to him. So to be a believer in Jesus is to have the Spirit of God indwelling you, the Spirit of Christ indwelling you. And then there's a whole lot of really good stuff in between. Some have said Romans 8 is one of the best chapters of the whole Bible. That, could be, that would be hard to argue against. There's some other chapters you could argue for. But in verse 26 it says of chapter 8, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. That verse encouraged me so much just this last couple of days. When I don't know what to ask for, when I don't know what to pray for, when literally the word groaning means to sigh, my Lord God, your Lord Jesus Christ, when you growl in anger, not at him, just at life, he knows. I mean, you should be in prayer even in anger, right? Be angry and sin not. Don't, so so, so the, Lord, the Lord knows how to pray for us even in our anger. Some of you are struggling with the financial implications of all of this. You're struggling with the frustrations of life. And guess what? Our God's Holy Spirit still lives in you and knows how to intercede on your behalf for the will of God to occur. In fact, when you whimper, and sigh because it hurts and you're broken hearted. You're broken hearted for the disappointments in life, the things that didn't go as you planned or that as you wanted them to or try as you may, it didn't work out. Many of you have disappointments and you have, maybe even in tears, you have whimpered. You've groaned, you've sighed. Our Lord God, through his Holy Spirit, he knows how to pray for you when you don't have words. Whenever, um, whenever it's, it's, a, it's a groan of injustice, because injustice is all around us in this world, right? I mean, it just is. Our Lord sees and he knows. He knows that sound that we make. He knows what it means. Let me just say, puppies may not even be the best um, image of this um, owner and, and puppy understanding one another. I'm telling you that Parents understand the cry of a child very shortly after the birth of that child to understand what it means to be hurt and to want mom or dad or to be lonely or to be scared or to be just slap angry. Um, they know all of those noises and sounds and what they mean. I'm trying to convince you today by the word of God that our Lord Jesus Christ who died for you and rose from the grave, church family, he lives in you. He dwells in you as a believer, and the Scriptures teach that if you believe in the Lord Christ, the Spirit is there, even if you've not, even if you've not unlocked Him and said, Lord, have your way in me. I'm praying today you would say, Lord, have your way in me. In my time of tumultuousness, in my time of doubt, in my time of struggle, in my time of worry, I'm handing it to you. I'm giving it, I'm giving it over. I'm trusting you to ask on my behalf. And, and, and I, can't, I can't not give you the other little piece that goes with this because at the end of that chapter, that's, it's, it's beautiful because I, I, I thought this thought this week. Maybe you've thought it too. It says in, uh, and I'm tricking them in the back because they don't, they don't have this verse. Um, it says in verse 28 of Romans 8, and we know that for those who love God's, God, excuse me, capital G, God, all things work together for good for those that love God the Lord and are called in according to his purpose. Can I just tell you something? That encouraged me, and I'll tell you why, and it should encourage you today, a whole big bunch of you today. You are in this category. It says, we know that for those who love God, I love God a lot, and I think you love God a lot. And if we love God, he's going to, I mean, through, his person, through the Son of Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit, he's going to work it out. The it, the hard thing. All of this, the virus, your life, the sickness, the finances, your situation, your future, your past, your present, the relationships that are, the ones that aren't, the things with school, the things that aren't working in school, the things with work, he's going to work it out. You say, well, that sounds really easy. That's what it means to live by faith is when you can't see the way, you don't know how to pray, you're trusting God's presence 
with you among the talks Jesus had with his disciples, the things that he told them. He promised they would not be orphans. And this legitimizes and makes sense what we're praying towards as we look at the birthday of of the beginning of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit and dwelling on his people. That had not happened yet here. In fact, he tells them again, uh, I told you it reminds us kind of 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 Luke 24 at the end. He tells them, stay in the city. Stay in Jerusalem, because guess what? This power from on high will clothe you to do the thing God's called you to do. That is the power of which I speak. It was given to them then. Yes, the apostles did some incredible things, some of which may not even need to be done today, miracle-wise. I don't know. Our God is capable of just about all that he wants to do. In fact, he's capable of anything that the word itself doesn't preclude him from. And so let's pray, God, work in me in a powerful way, but Lord, even more importantly, Help me to surrender myself to your spirit so I would live in the spirit and not in the flesh. As we move forward, some of you are desperately wondering when this promise of the Lord um, will occur, this promise to return. In fact, before I get there, let me just quickly say, and I want to spend more time on this next week, actually, as we get to the ascension. But it says he presented himself, himself alive to them. He showed them his side. He showed them the scars. But he did this over a 40-day period. The ascension happened at 40 days after the time. 40 days is significant. We'll talk about it again in a week. But he spoke to them about the kingdom. And he says he told them not to depart from Jerusalem, but he said, wait for the promise of the Spirit. And he said, you heard from me for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was a promise signal that the Messiah was here. Uh, We also will note that when they had come together, they immediately started asking, when is he going to return? When are you going to return and restore your kingdom? Some of y'all have been asking, if you're honest, you've been asking this question. You've been asking, is the Lord going to return soon? Is, the, is, he, is he coming now? Is, is everything done that needs to come? I just want to tell you, the day that the Lord Jesus comes is going to be a great day. It's going to be a phenomenal day. But I want to promise you that church people over the years have embarrassed themselves over and over and over again trying to predict what is above our pay grade. Like Jesus told the disciples, here's what he told them. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father is fixed by his own authority. In other words, when's he coming? The answer is none you. None your business. That's, that's for God to know and for us to find out. Now, does it mean we shouldn't study the revelation and we shouldn't study in time? No, no, no. All that's a blessing. The Bible says that's a blessing. It's a good thing. Take comfort in it. The scriptures clearly have taught us, though, to do business till he comes. And so it's a reminder to us as Christians today, as we live in the flesh, hopefully live by the Spirit uh, in this mortal body, and we say, God, help me to live in a way that honors you in the here and now to do business until that by which you fixed in your own authority, you determine that you're going to come. But then it says, but you will receive power in the meantime. In the meantime, before I return, you're going to receive power from the Holy Spirit. And here's what you're going to do. He gave them what's going to happen. Now he's going to tell them why they're getting the power. They're getting the power so that they can be his witnesses. And it's, I just want to tell you, I'm not going to give you all the, the parameters of it, but essentially many have suggested that this verse 8 gives you the table of contents really for the entire rest of the book of Acts of the Apostles, which tells us what happened in the early life of the church. The gospel was shared first in Jerusalem, and then it was shared as it describes it in all Judea and Samaria, and it continued to spread. And it, con- it, spread, it spread very, very quickly after the time of the coming of the Holy Spirit of God at Pentecost. Beautiful thing. But can I take a note right here? That this very picture of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and being witnesses of the resurrection is, is essentially the same message that we just looked at, that, he, that, that, that Luke had documented that was the purpose of the believers over in the thing they were to be about over here in, in Luke chapter 24, where he said to them um, to preach repentance, forgiveness of sins to the nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. This is still the simple message that we've been called to be about, that we should be about, that we should be after and not give up on and should continue. I I, I continue to want to be able to say to all of us, in our desire to, to know when will things be normal, well, they're not ever going to be exactly like they were. You know that, right? Like every date that has a new day attached to it, 
reflects the fact that today is not yesterday. And by virtue that today is not yesterday, here's the truth. This, this is powerful. Today is not yesterday, right? And so the truth is that it's always changing. As we are learning to be flexible, I am so proud of you. Um, by the way, I heard this really cool, and, I, and I'm taking some other, somebody else's great idea, but I heard, I heard this week what it means to be flexible. It, to be flexible means to, to, to be moved and to be twisted and turned, but to not be bent out of shape. You know, that'd be a good word for some of us this week, that when we have to flex, not to be bent out of shape, because usually that's when we find ourselves in the flesh. Well, listen, the truth is the gospel is what we're to be about, to continue to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But dear believer in Jesus, our Lord has promised us his presence in us. And I don't know what you're going to be doing this week, but as transparently as I can possibly tell you, in my moments with the Lord, I am going to be seeking him out that he would do his will in me through his spirit that his power would show up oh yeah that his power would show up may 31st on his on the birthday of the church in 2020 for sure it's the anniversary of the birth of, of, of the beginning of the church no doubt about it but that between now and then that people would choose jesus christ that the power of the spirit of god to do things and cause circumstances to happen uh, in people's lives for people to receive the gospel and be open to the gospel um I'm going to be praying that it happens. I'm going to be praying that God reveals himself in my own life, that he empowers me to be the witness that he called them to be. I want to encourage you as we continue to move forward toward Pentecost, pray with knowledge that Jesus is in you. That's right. Jesus is in you. If you would say today, Jesus is not in me, I've never trusted Jesus as Savior. I want you to take and text to the number on the screen, next step, next step. We want to be able to contact you and talk to you about how to choose Jesus as your Savior and what that means and how to tap into this power of the Holy Spirit that he's promised. Truly, it is calling on the name of God, asking him to forgive your sins and to come into your life. Church family, hang in there. Uh, continue to do the right things. Continue to trust in God and know that you know that you know that you know the promises of the Scripture are true. He is in you, and He wants to be, man, He wants to others to be to be made known by you and through you and in you as Jesus Himself shows Himself to others through the power that clothes you. What a beautiful promise and a beautiful picture and a beautiful plan that our Lord had for his gospel to be shared. Let's go share the gospel in our Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the utter, uttermost parts of the earth. Let me pray. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father, forgive us for going through the motions of life, having trusted Christ, never speaking to this person of the Holy Spirit that is the third part of the Godhead, who is real and in our life and who desires to power us, to empower us, to live in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray right now as we don't even know how to pray for all the circumstances at play in our lives. We ask, Lord, we ask that you would know our heart. We ask that you would sift it, that you would purify it, that you would clean it, that you would line it up with your will. And Father, that your Holy Spirit would take our heart's desire and put them before the throne of God and that our lives, not our plans, but Lord, your will would align itself with what you want in us. Lord, help us to shine a light in this world in Jesus' name. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Christ. Have a great week. Tell somebody about Jesus this week. Hey everybody, I'm excited to be able to announce to you today uh, that our church at Emerald Coast Fellowship is going to be making a donation uh, of $19,000 to a group called Never Thirst. Now we have partnered with them for quite a while. In fact, in the background you see pictures of some of the wells that we already have built. With each well, uh, not only are many families impacted by being able to have clean water, these happen in very impoverished places uh, that Folks, one, don't have the gospel, and two, don't have a clean water source, so they stay sick all the time. I mean, we think about being isolated. Our time of isolation is not like how they're living. 
And so we have partnered year after year and built all these wells and candidly shared the gospel with many, many people through this partnership. Well, how can we do a donation like that? Well, the truth is the people that are on Coast Fellowship, you guys, you have been giving money along the way all of this last year. As you know, April is that month where never Thursday is able to match up to a certain amount. Uh, and so of the 19,000 that we're giving, there's a, a private donor that will match that amount as well. So it will double how far it goes in building wells. So what we're going to do with the 19,000 that we're giving is we're gonna build four wells in India uh, that will, every one of them will provide the gospel as well as clean water to a village. And then also we're gonna do something new. We're gonna rehab a well uh, that is in Uganda, one that has, has been used in, in years past. It's not part of the web, never first, but it needs to be fixed and made right and it will help a lot of people. Again, the gospel message comes with each of these wells as they serve not just clean drinking water, but living water. Thank you so much for helping us in these difficult times be able to continue to propel the gospel forward uh, to the four corners of the world. God bless you.